Hey guys, it's Samantha and I am here today to do a review on the books and short stories that we read for My Very Jerkins Christmas Read Along. So there are five stories I'm going to kind of summarize and review for you and tell you a little bit about my thoughts about them. So let us get started. So the first story that we read as part of my very Dickens Christmas read-along was The Goblins Who Stole a Sexton. A Sexton, if you guys don't know, is a man that gra digs graves. The story follows a grave digger who is a very sour-tempered man. He doesn't like Christmas. He's kind of a jerk, basically. I think he hits some kid on the head with a lantern on Christmas Eve for being too jolly. So he's just a jerk. He's a creep. What have you. So he goes to the graveyard, and he goes to start digging a grave. He's very happy about digging on Christmas. And he gets kidnapped by a bunch of goblins. And basically torture him and show him images that sort of teach him that it, the way in which he lives is not the best to be cruel, it is best to be kind in a sort of macabre fashion that they teach him this. For me the story was sort of trying to tell you to embrace your hardships and not have them become, make who you are as a person and embrace them because that is what gives you compassion and kindness towards others as well as not to judge or be cruel to others because you don't know what they're going through. The story is definitely a kind of a creepy story which I think a lot of people don't know this but in the Victorian era particularly it was quite typical to tell ghost stories on Christmas Eve and scary stories hence the line from A Most Wonderful Time of the Year by Andy Williams and scary ghost stories and tales of the glories of Christmases long long ago. It used to be a tradition that I think was kind of cool. So it's definitely creepy in that way. It was, it was meant to be. Uh, Dickens language in this story is very very well done. He is just has a way of conjuring a lot of image and making things feel very not dense, but he just writes he just writes in such a way that you can almost taste the words, if that makes any sense whatsoever. And he does so in a very short amount of space. I mean, I think that story was only about four pages long. It was very, very good, and I rated it four out of five stars. The next story we read is The Haunted Man and the Ghost Bargain. This story follows a professor-teacher type. He has basically had a very hard life, and he eventually makes a pact with a ghost that a spirit that he will forget all of his hardships and wherever he goes he'll be able to bestow this blessing gift slash curse on other people thereby causing them to forget their past hardships. Basically I think the story was trying to illustrate that our hardships and our sufferings as humans are what make us have compassion and empathy for our fellow man and without that we lose our compassion and ability to be kindly to those who obviously are suffering because this man himself becomes a very very cruel and mean man because he has forgotten what it's like to go through hardship. So I think it's basically just saying that we shouldn't wish to forget what we have gone through because it's what makes us human. It's what gives us the ability to have compassion for our fellow man and to help them in their times of need because we can reflect upon our own past sufferings. I didn't much care for the story. It was one of Charles Dickens' more dense stories. It was a little bit hard to get through. It was a little bit dull. I'm not going to lie. I probably skimmed the last 50 pages. It wasn't, it wasn't told in his typical engaging fashion, I think. It was definitely a little bit more dense, but I did like the moral of the story. I think overall I rated it 2 out of 5 stars because I didn't enjoy reading it. I did, however, like the message. The next story we read was A Cricket on the Hearth. This was one of his Charles Dickens short stories. It follows a family, John Peary Bingle, his wife Dot, and young baby, as well as their nanny Tilly. He's a carrier, he transports packages, and based, the story's kind of told from the pers a little bit from the perspective of the cricket that is on the hearth. The cricket is seen as a good luck charm of sorts. Eventually this family comes to cross paths with Mr. Tackleton, who is a rather mean and cruel toy maker who is soon to be marrying his son's, his lost son, who's presumed dead sweetheart. Also, the family is joined by what appears to be a rather elderly man who kind of stays with them throughout this time period. Events transpire that threaten to kind of tear the family apart. But in the end, everybody ends up coming together and ends up being a sort of a happy ending. It's kind of a very bad summation of the novel, but it's kind of hard to summarize short stories without revealing a lot of the plot. I have read this one before and I really, really enjoy it. It's not the more Christmassy of the books, but I still enjoyed the characters in this story. It is told in a very engaging fashion and it is sort of reminiscent of the Christmas Carol, at least with Mr. Tackleton and Ebenezer Scrooge. There are a lot of parallels between those two characters. I do like the twist at the end and overall it's a rather enjoyable will read, though not as Christmassy as some of the others, so it was intended to be a Christmas story. And I rate this story 4 out of 5 stars. The next story that we read is another reread for me and is The Chimes by Charles Dickens. This is another goblin story. The story centers around Trotty, his daughter Meg, and her betrothed 
and her fiance Richard. Basically the story kind of explores the plight of the poor and how they were viewed in the Victorian times. I think Charles Dickens it's hard a story to explain without, without ruining the plot, I think, but I think basically Charles Dickens is trying to explore how people view the poor as just these horrible, terrible people with no moral values. They don't have a right to exist. They're never going to be able to change. They can't do anything for themselves or add anything to society. And he's sort of basically calling to attention the fact that this isn't true, that there are people just like we are. The story kind of comes to a climax when Trotty, who loves these church bells that have been there since antiquity, they've been there forever. He hears them calling out to him on New Year's Day and he ends up climbing up to the bell tower and these goblins appear who live in the bells and they're basically calling him out for losing faith in humanity because of the way people treat him and his fellow daughter and her fiance because they're poor and other people he encounters and that you shouldn't lose faith in humanity, you should help strive to make it better. I, just, I like the overall message of the story. I think I like this one actually a little bit better than The Cricket on the Hearth. It's just a very, it's a very poignant tale. I think that it really calls to attention a lot of our own viewpoints of people around us and especially the way that we perceive the poor people. So I really enjoyed the message of the story. I enjoyed the sort of creepiness factor to it, especially towards the end. And overall, I rated this story four out of five stars. The last book that we read for the Charles Dickens Christmas read-along was, of course, the very famous A Christmas Carol. I think we all know the story of A Christmas Carol. It follows Ebenezer Scrooge, who is a cruel, selfish, and greedy man. He is eventually, on Christmas Eve night, or I guess rather really early in Christmas Day morning, greeted by three ghosts, a Christmas past, a Christmas present, and Christmas future, where he is confronted with his past and how it has created him as a person that he is now, as well as what's going on in the present that he isn't aware of outside of his own selfish world, and what will happen to him in the future if he continues down the path that he is on. I absolutely love this book. This is my favorite of Charles Dickens Christmas stories. This is a very definitive piece for any type of Christmas literature. It has shaped a lot of our perceptions of Christmas. It popularized the term Merry Christmas. It, as Sabrina from Stake of Chino pointed out in one of her videos, which I'll try to remember to link down below, even has kind of painted our perception of it always being a white Christmas because the time in which she wrote that was very common in England. It had it caused a resurgent of outpouring of giving to the poor both here in America and in the UK when the story first came out. It has been immensely popular since it was first published and it has just shaped a lot of sort of our, our, Chris, our ideas of Christmas spirit, I think. I absolutely love the story. It is heartwarming. The way that Charles Dickens is able to describe Christmas and what it means and just paint this picture of Christmas is absolutely beautiful and he does it in such a beautiful, beautiful way. And it's funny because I've always wondered what it is about Christmas that captured Charles Dickens' heart. I haven't been able to find anything yet when I try to research it as to why Christmas meant so much to him, but I find it very, very fascinating as to why it was so important to him. So if anybody knows why or has an article they can link me, that would be great. But back to your Christmas Carol. Like as I said, this is my favorite of his stories. I rated this five out of five stars. It is excellent. It's not very long. It's about a hundred or so pages. I highly recommend it if you haven't read it already. And if you're gonna choose any of his Christmas stories to read for the first time, I suggest this one as being your place to start because this is quite excellent. Also, we didn't read this part, part of the Very Dickens Christmas read-along, but I did read a couple of other short essays that he wrote about Christmas, including Christmas Festivities, which is more of a little sh little story about Christmas and kind of painting what Christmas Day would look like for the average person, and The Seven Poor Travelers, which was a really, really fun Christmas story. It was like 20 pages, so I recommend you check that one out too if you haven't already. It was kind of about this guy helping out poor people and giving them a good Christmas dinner. It was a really nice story, and I enjoyed it. All right, guys, those were the five stories that we read as part of the Very Dickens Christmas read-along. If you participated or if you've read these on your own beforehand, let me know down in the comments what you thought of these stories. I hope you guys all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye!